The amount of people, there's millions of people running around saying I know my worth and never do anything because the market doesn't give them the leverage to create worth. Based on my thesis that hip hop rules the world, it's probably a $50 billion company no, if you. What's your thesis? Hip hop rules the world. Fucking with you, bro. Moving it quick, trying to get rich and I'm dodging these things. Got head in the Uber, they call me your list. She pissed, but it is what it is, what it is. Girl, I'm stuck up in my ways, yeah. How you doing? I'm good. What's been going on? Uh, Seems like things are going well. Things are going well. <laughs> I'm working really hard. Yep. <laughs> but things are well. Um, I've just been making music. I'm where? Um, you don't make music in English? Because it naturally happens that way or thoughtfully you wanted to go about it that way? I thoughtfully wanted to go about it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. But also, and naturally, also, you know, it's my first language. Yeah, like like if you go in the booth or if you like go musical, does it like, like you think Spanish. in Spanish? Yeah. It, the reason I wanted to ask you that right away was it's kind of like, I think a lot of the reasons some of my content goes viral mm -hmm. is because I think in Russian and there's a lot of... Russian? Yeah, I was born in Russia. What? Yeah, in Belarus specifically. And I think in Russian, and so a lot of sayings and things I think are trans, I'm translating them from a Russian standpoint to English, uh -huh. and they haven't been said that way in English, even though they're things that, you know? Yeah. Like my favorite saying that some, my grandma used to say was, you can't put your ass on two toilets, which was basically like, don't get stretched thin. Yeah. So like, when I like sometimes make content, I'll, I could say that, and everyone's like, that's insane! But they just have never heard that and that. It's all the same shit that, like all these sayings in every language are the same, yeah. like trying to make the same point, yeah, but the yeah. analogies are different. Yeah. And so I think a lot of my analogies are unique because I'm not well read and because I think in Russian. And so what, as I've been listening to your stuff and then like, and then just like hearing you talk right now and I'm like, huh, I wonder if she, when she's creative, thinks in Spanish and that's why that happens. I mean, definitely that's part of it, but also I definitely Opportunity. want to represent where I'm from. Yeah, so I get that. <laughs> that's also another reason why. Yeah, I get it. How long have you guys known each other? Just now? Uh, I went to her show in New York, so how many shows have you done? In, in New York, in general? In general. In general, maybe like five? Yeah, and so the show <laughs> in New York new. was really great. Yeah. You loved it? Yeah. Loved it, yeah. What was your observation? Tell me. <laughs> oh, I'm taking off my jacket now, all right. Great performer. What about the audience? How was the response? It's funny, like when I go to shows or like, I like when I like dig into your stuff, like mm -hmm. when I when he first put it on my radar, I don't even listen to your stuff. I read the comments about your stuff. Like almost every time I hear of a new artist, I'll spend the first couple of hours, if I decide I care, uh -huh. reading comments about that person, not actually listening to the person's music. So like I always, I always Why think, because I think consumer centric, I think. Mm, makes sense. Like for, like I don't, you know why? I think it's humility. I don't think my opinion matters. Mm -hmm. I'm always, like I always think if I was an A&R guy, that I would go to shows and almost not even pay attention to the band or the artist. Mm -hmm. I would spend all my time watching how the audience is reacting and why. When I give speech, I gave a speech yesterday to 4,000 people and I was thinking how interesting it was. I'm literally, while I'm giving the speech, adjusting my speech based on how people are reacting to things I've said, mm -hmm. which gives me an indicator of what kind of crowd it is. Gotcha. It's like being a DJ. You have to like, read people and see what they're like. I think that's right. <laughs> right. True. Yeah. So how was the audience? Do you remember? The audience was great. I mean, people came out to see her. You yeah, know what I mean? they were pumped. It was the first time she was there. Yeah, and, and like she dances in between songs and stuff. So the crowd was <laughs> clapping for her. That's cool. It was yeah. a great show. Doing my thing. You know? For you. <laughs> Good for you. Just doing my thing. We were just talking. She has some new music coming, new music video. 2019 is looking like it's going to be great. Got a new management team. When did you start working with those guys? Uh, just like late last year. So you know them? Going forward. I know them. I don't know them super well, but I, I know them. You know of them. I met him a couple of times with J Balvin. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. My manager is Balvin's like uh, homie art direction guy. Just kind of helps him out with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anything I can help with? I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm making a music video and so I'm, I'm basically at this point in my, in my life, in my career, where it's like um, everything I've made, I've just made scrapped. Out of my own, scrapped, just like out of my own pocket, like, yep. you know, I have a day job still. Like, yep. Work, I, save, exactly. invest in your career. Exactly. But um, so I'm just like in that, like we're talking to a couple of labels, but like that hasn't happened and we're taking our time with that and I want to put some music out because I feel like- You want leverage. The longer, exactly, the longer I wait, the more leverage I have. 100%. I can ask for. God, will, know, God willing, God willing something gets small. crazy yeah. and pops, you've got, all, you've got much more leverage. Exactly. So I'm I understand. Just kinda, that is the model. Yeah, I'm just like- That's the beauty of today's I'm not world. I'm anything until like- cause You I, feel it. I know my worth. And yep. Like, I feel like I'm worth more and, than and you know what? And you know what's funny? Like a lot of times people are like, I know my worth. You're being actually more thoughtful than that. You're putting yourself in a position to allow the market to establish your worth. Yeah. Everybody knows their worth. The amount of pe- there's millions of people running around saying I know my worth and never do anything because the market doesn't give them the leverage to create worth. Mm. What I like about what you're doing is you're not sitting in your room ideologically saying I know my worth. You're putting in work to get money to put yourself in a position, right. you're doing it the right way. Thank you. No, it's real, I mean <laughs> it. Trying, no, I mean it, I mean it. Like, yeah. I think I know my worth is like when people always say like, I'm not willing to work for free, I know my worth. And I'm like, you have ego. Mm. Like you have, you're winning, you're building a foundation on humility. Mm-hmm. You're actually working and I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure, but I assume you need to have a job that gives you flexibility so you're probably not making a billion dollars a year. No. Working part time, and that's like exactly. Lucky, you know, that when I found this. Yep, this. and so like, I just, w- I just wish more youngsters would follow your blueprint. Mm-hmm. People are just not willing to eat shit, and and like, it's just entitlement. Mm-hmm. Everybody just decided they're the best rapper in the world, and they just leave comments on rappers' Instagrams and be like, "You haven't heard me yet. I'm the best. Cool. Show me." People do that shit to me, and I'm of like, course. "What?" <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, I'm... like it's called, it's called. SoundCloud and Spotify, like you have distribution. Yeah. If you're so good, show me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Everyone's talking. Good exactly. for you. It's exactly right. That's the way to do it. Every single artist in the world should build leverage. Mm-hmm. Takes time, but yeah, that's the way to do everything, it. Everything, <laughs> everything great takes time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything great takes time. Every- anyways, what I'm doing right now is I'm making a music video. Uh huh. Like, Mm-hmm. And I'm basically, because I don't have the budget yet, I'm just doing it. It's just me and my boyfriend gonna shoot it. <laughs> We're gonna go to Joshua Tree and shoot it. But he actually makes videos, so I'm just kinda using like my, my resources, like my friends that do like hair, makeup, like styling, and you know, just. I'm still like, there's no budget, but I like for it to be some budget, so I've been thinking about like brands that I could work with. Do you have any thoughts on that? There is one specific, uh, Rimoa, the suitcase company. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But also, like, above all, it was really just kind of like, we playlist their music so much, and she's in town, and just wanted to meet, you know? Like, we, yeah, I was pumped. We really believe in you, so. <laughs> You're gonna win. Thank you. You're gonna win. I mean, I, you have, like, just listening to it, you have the talent. It's very clear, at least one man's point of view. But to be honest with you, just even listening for five minutes about how you're going about it, it gives me way more confidence. I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing I'm trying to help young artists with is entitlement, and you don't have that. No, I'm like, I, to me, like, even working with people, I have a hard time working with people who are like super entitled. Like, I, I can't. I have to me like too. oversee that, but it's the hardest thing for me. I'm just like, I don't fuck with you if you're like someone who's like, Things are big shit or whatever, you know? You're preaching. You know? I like humble people. My big thing is like, there's a bunch of people who are big shit mm-hmm. who don't act entitled. So That's who the shit right there. Right? So then who the fuck are, like who, <laughs> so who the fuck are all these people that haven't done shit and are walking around like they did? I that to know. me is wild. Like, I I'm see like, it how all. How did you get there mentally? Like how? <laughs> the environment. Some people have the luxury of not being brought up in an environment of entitlement. Yeah. That's the greatest thing I'm thankful for. Mm-hmm. 
you know, between being an immigrant and more importantly, a mother that de- desperately loved me and made me feel like I was the best, yeah. but didn't create entitlement. Mm-hmm. It's a fine line. Building self-esteem without entitlement is a fine line. Right. It's a fine fucking line. I didn't know you were an immigrant. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I was like, that's dope. It's dope because most immigrants, not all, have the luxury of having adversity. Mm -hmm. It's hard to feel entitled. Like, first of all, just entitlement is just such a poison. It it never leads to anything good. And all these 24 year olds who are living in $8 coffee land Mm -hmm. and sitting around and spitting shit on Twitter when they haven't done shit in their lives. That's, we gotta be careful about that. Yeah, there's a lot of those in LA. There's a lot of those in LA. <laughs> and in New York, you know? <laughs> and like, I don't know, you know? Mm-hmm. Like just, entitlement is poison. 100%. And humility is foundational. It's good for you. Makes me really wanna help. 